right, Remy, let's not mess around. Let's really try to make this happen. Get rid of this cave sickle and be able to get a combatant loot card. So we're going to spend a two stamina right out of the gates here to do an attack. Again, remember, in between the rounds, because we are starting the third round, I already unexhausted all cards. So that include the hammer helm you can see right here is now ready to go again. My war axe is ready to go again. All the stamina points have been recouped back to four for both my characters. So I'm spending two right now in order to make an attack. So we are definitely going to use the war axe right now and I am going to go ahead and exhaust it so I'm able to use books to add a physical damage as well. So basically whatever symbol I roll with this war axe which is awesome whether it's books, shields or stars it's all going to give physical damage now. So boom and of course the black stuff on the bottom as I mentioned before are always in effect. You have to exhaust for the books to become a plus one physical damage. So We've been over that, but just want to make 100% certain there's no uh, confusion there. So we got two white dice. We're making an attack here, and it should be a pretty clean hit. Now I have two stamina remaining, so the question becomes, I know that if I want to move and be productive in terms of getting further up the tile, which I do, I'm going to have to spend one more stamina point, but that will leave me with not enough stamina to do any more attacks. So the question is, do I hold on to a stamina point for the first time ever, or do I burn it to get an empower? on this thing so I have a better chance of landing hits. Now, I've already got three damage on here thanks to Rook from last time, but I really don't want to waste time. And if I don't kill this thing, then I've got to sit there longer um, or I actually just don't move at all and I make another attack. So this is tough. Um, I think in order to make sure that it just works out the way I want it to work out, I'm going to burn another stamina to empower this attack. I really don't want to do that, but you know what? I want to be sure that this thing is dead, and that's going to really help me because I'm exhausting my War Axe. I'll have more icons to use for damage, so let's see how it goes. Oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted to see. So the good news is, guys, I got tons of shields, but this thing right here, the hammer helm, is going to allow me to exhaust it, as we've done before, to uh, re-roll any dice in your combat dice pool. So any dice, any number of dice. And I'm definitely going to re-roll these two. I'm going to keep the shields, and we're going to hope for better results on that, because otherwise that would have been a complete miss. So cross your fingers much better much better oh yeah we've got way more than enough there that's a 10 so two damage already 10 take away eight is two damage and you start adding all those shields up in the books one for each one of them that is going to blast this thing straight off of the table so there it is removed from the game fantastic that worked out great now we're going to use our last point of stamina on remy in order to get remy moving down the tunnel here so again you can move through your own allies you just can't move uh you know through enemies so that's something to be mindful of as well remy is going to Try to figure out where the best placement is because this could actually be very interesting in that the red totems right here can't draw a line of sight to us yet because the, the obstructing terrain is here. But as soon as I move Remy into kind of this area here, I believe here would be the first spot that this thing could make draw a line of sight and especially if I'm over here. All right, so how we're going to do this is Remy's going to go straight up the middle so what's going to happen is when we move into this space she has seven movement just so you're aware six is the norm but she has the occult shirt which gives her a plus one of movement so she's got seven she's going to go one into the space with an ally it costs two to move out of a space with an ally so that's going to be three to get to here then four five six and the second she moves into here even though she still has one more movement remaining this totem can draw or i should say remy can draw line of sight to this totem and the second that that can happen you immediately check for your line of sight to make sure it does which it, it does for sure we didn't even really need the line there to know that that was a valid one uh, but the token now is going to activate so we're going to go to the scenario book to find out what happens and then after we figure out what happens then i'll still have one more movement left to use based on what ends up happening through the activation of the token all right, time to find out what happens with the red totem. As you peer around the corner, you see a handful of cave sickles skittering about. They spring into action when they notice you. The cave sickles are blocking the path that leads deeper into the caves. Spawn two cave sickles adjacent to the space this totem occupied. Across the gap, you see another cave sickle emerge near a small box. Oh, that must be near the treasure we have. Spawn one more cave sickle adjacent to the blue loot token. Yep, that is exactly where it's going to land. All right, so we got three cave sickles coming out in total. So very similar to how we set up and spawned the last group, we have a two group and a single group coming in here. Two of them are going to spawn right next to the red totem. So I can place them anywhere adjacent. I could place them like this. I could place them like this. I'm going to choose to place them stacked like this. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to, hmm, at this particular point, I'm probably going to go ahead and put one from this different group. i got to decide whether I want it here, here, or here. Uh, I'll probably want as far back as possible, I'm guessing, but also not within one, two, three, four of those. So maybe I will put this one here so it's further away and doesn't benefit from anything nasty yet anyway. This one will likely try to jump over the gap anyway to come after me, but we'll see how it goes. So we've got one group of case sickles here and one group down here. So that was something that was worth looking into because it does and could be confused as being one full group of three, but the actual, the way that these cave circles are actually coming into play and based on how they're bolded in that scenario book, they're stating that there's two coming in from one area and one coming in for another. So those are two separate groups, very similar to how we handled the very first time they spawned. So this is important because it can actually affect your loot as well. Uh, because I'll gain a loot by taking this one out and gain a loot by grabbing or taking out these two. You know, something you don't want to miss out on. So we're going to go ahead now and finish off the last movement point that I have uh, for Remy, which I guess is pretty much just moving straight forward because at this point it's not going to matter too, too much. Um, in this case, most of these guys are going to be able to come after her anyway, so I might as well just get right in there. So we'll move in like that. That is going to end her turn, and at this particular point, we have to make sure that we roll for initiative, too, to figure out where these cave sickles are going to land. So, the four to six cave sickles are the ones right up here, so we'll roll for them last, and we're going to grab the initiative card for the one to three now, and we're going to roll for that. So, currently, the only ones in the track are Remy and Rook, so we're going to go ahead here and roll for the one and three. We need one black die. And we know how this goes, so here we go. Let's roll and see how this happens. Oh, look at that. That's going to be right after Remy, because Remy was the one that triggered it. So the Casicles 1 through 3, which is this guy right here, is going to go uh, right after Remy finishes his turn, which is literally right now. And then the other set, which is 4 to 6 up here, we're going to roll for that one. And they bounce down the track to the end. So essentially they would normally go right after Remy. But two of these is going to have them move two positions down the track. So they'll be at the end of the initiative track, four and six. And you'll see that when I zoom out in a second. So we're now going to go ahead and activate sickle one through three, which is only this guy right here. So again, just for clarity in terms of what I rolled there and how the four through six landed at the end, it was when I roll shields that they bounce down the positions based on how many shields you have. So it would have landed right in between here, uh, but because I rolled shields, then it actually moves down the track two positions and ends up where it ends up at the very end there. All right, so we're starting off. Remy's already gone. Cave Sickles are going next. One through three puts us right here. This individual is all by itself, and we're going to do its first check. And is there an opponent adjacent? There is not. Is there an opponent within range four? One, two, three, four. There is an opponent within range four. So if that is the case, we're going to then move to be adjacent to the opponent. Interesting. Oh, actually, sorry. First off, it says, if the uh, is there an opponent within range four, this is the first time this has ever happened, then make a range four attack. So it's going to attack first, then it's going to move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage within movement range. So that's going to be, it's going to try to jump across the gap. And then it's going to try to make an actual melee attack against me. And it could inflict poison and do a force nine. So that sounds terrible. I hope Remy's ready for this because uh, her cult shirt is unexhausted. So that's good. So let's Let's go ahead and make the first range attack here from this sickle to Remy. All right, so the range attack here starting off with this sickle is going to have two white dice, but we have to check for that hive mind. Is anything within SOI range four? One, two, three, four. Yes, there is one. So one of these white dice will come out, an orange die will come in, making it a little bit tougher. And we have to decide whether or not we want to dodge. So I'm absolutely going to use my occult shirt. I'm going to exhaust this card in order to help us out here. So it's going to allow me to dodge, which will allow me to bring in a black die, hoping to dodge this attack in general and up my defense. Uh, it needs a 10 or higher to land, but hopefully with the shields and the black die, it'll get even worse for this sickle. So let's see what happens. Ha! Huh. Well, that didn't pan out so good. Oh no, it just barely got through. So basically a skull on a dodge means basically the dodge does nothing. So that just didn't work out at all. Um, it actually landed with a 10. 
So we actually got hit from the other side of that giant uh, gaping hole in the floor um, and a 10 is going to land. Now the 10 is a perfect hit, but it isn't higher than my defense. So there's no extra damage given there. So next we have to take a look at all the symbols that it can gain. And it does have on the case, because this is the first time it's ever done this, uh, down at the very bottom here, you can see it says plus one physical damage right there for every shield it gets. So basically in this case, two shields, two extra damage. So that's all that's actually coming through is just the two damage. So I'm gonna be taking some hits. This is the first time that that's actually happened. Now I'll double check really quick to see if I have armor. No, I don't. So if I had armor, I could actually negate some of these. Remy has no armor yet, Rook has one. So if Rook ever gets past, um, you know, or this was to happen to Rook, Rook would only be taking one actual hit. So that's something to remember as well, um, but yeah. That was uh, kind of nasty, but it's at least it's over. Or is it? No, it's not because it continues through that AI uh, movement here because it says then move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage, which is definitely Remy now because there's actually is damage on her as well. Uh, within movement range and movement range for the cave sickle is six. So we're going to go one, two, three. I guess I guess it's going to take the path with least you know least dangerous terrain to go through essentially. So one, two, three, four, five. That will actually get it within range of me and only going over one spot. So that is uh, based on the golden rules within Madara and stuff like that. They're they're gonna they're gonna do um, the least whatever the movement path that has the least harm towards them. That's what they're gonna try to pull off. So in this case, definitely had the movement, one, two, three, four, five, it has six. We still get to roll one black die, and if it lands on the skull, then this thing falls through uh, and dies. And I really hope this happens, it'd be hilarious if this works out. Come on, skull. Yes, I got it, I got it, yes, yes, yes. This thing is gone. It doesn't even get to continue on with the stuff that just happened, that's fantastic. Now that did sit really awkwardly, like right here, but I'm gonna say that that was flat enough to not be a cock die. Normally, if they're sitting on a super crazy angle like this, where it's like you can't figure out which of the two sides it is, but I'm taking that, that was perfect. All right, whew. Okay, that worked out really nicely. So with that thing actually dying because it fell through the cavern floor, <laughs> which is hilarious, uh, we are going to gain a combatant loot card because that was one of the only group from that particular uh, one to three. So we'll also remove that card from the initiative track as well because they're not going to initiate anymore because it just fell to its death. And uh, we're going to grab a combatant loot card. So we're going to flip this thing over and we got ourselves item loot. Oh, that looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and resolve this. Now, actually, I'm just noticing now that did we pull a, no, we didn't. We did not pull a combatant loot card on the second group of cavesicles earlier on. We only grabbed a five from the first set. So technically, this is actually supposed to be the combatant loot card from the uh, prior set that we just killed. So we'll do this now even though I missed it. And then we're gonna pull another one for the one that actually just fell into the cavern. So I do apologize for that. I thought I'd pulled a card for that. Uh, I'm just looking around. No, I, I don't think I did. So awesome. Okay, so the item loot. So roll two white dice, and then you basically gain whatever, whatever it lands. This is really cool. I've never actually got this one before. So we'll see what happens. There's no re-rolling in this one either. So let's see how it goes. All right, so we got a seven and a four. It's gonna get us up to 11. So we get a core card. Very cool, and now it's gonna be a mundane core because it's gonna match the actual uh, item level we're currently in, but we'll deal with that very, very soon. Okay, next up, let's actually grab the combatant loot card for the cave skull that fell through uh, the cavern floor. A nine, that's much nicer. So Remy now has, because um, that was essentially going after Remy and all part of Remy's situation. So we'll put that on Remy. But again, remember, uh, goal at the very end is all cumulative for the party. So we'll talk more about how that's accumulated and how it's different in the two player variant. Um, in terms of the item loot card, uh, we, gained, we gained a mundane core, which sounds really awesome. So let's talk quickly about Remy's loadout and what's allowed to be carried. So first off, all of the characters in the game are allowed to have two hands of weapons with a weapon upgrade per hand. Uh, you're allowed to have an armor with one armor upgrade. You're allowed to have a core with one core upgrade. You're allowed to have one accessory, three relics, 
three consumables, one familiar, and one companion. Those are the limits of how much you can carry into a scenario per character. So you heard the one core. Now when I got that item loot card from the combatant loot deck, it said that I gained a core. I already have a core equipped right now. So essentially what happens is you gain a core from the, uh, from the mundane core pile, which is all based on the loot level. So it says mundane core right here, and because this, this particular level is considered a mundane level, I go and find all the mundane core cards, shuffle them up. There's only six of them, actually, because I'm using just what's in the base game. I haven't merged in what's in the promo kits and things like that. And you're going to go ahead and randomly draw one. Um, so what will happen is, in future scenarios, let's say, hypothetically, the loot level is not mundane, it's uncommon, then what you're going to do if you ever pull this item loot card is you're going to actually take all of the uh, loot level cards from uncommon, common and mundane merge them all into one deck shuffle them and pull one so even though you'll be at a loot level that's higher up the tier you're still merging in the lower tiers below it into the deck before you select the uh randomly select i should say the item that you're going to gain from this card so that's worth noting um Again, the limit size of what you can hold on your character is worth noting. The other reason I mention that is because I'm going to gain a core right now that I'm not going to have equipped. But what you also have on your character is what's known as a pack. And your pack can hold up to three other cards, essentially, on the side. But the really cool thing is, is when you're playing the, th the two-player variant, that pack size goes from three to five. So I can have five other things outside of the cards I have equipped on Remy uh, kind of to be basically equipped between scenarios or even equipped at times during the scenario. But I'm not gonna confuse the waters of talking about that too, too much right now, but just be known, I'm gonna pull a random mundane core item right now for that loot uh, item card that I got, and we're gonna put it in the pack for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these cards. I'm gonna put them under the table because technically you can actually see the top and bottom of them and it kind of gives it away. And then I'm just gonna shuffle them around in my hands. We're gonna pull one out and see what happens. I got... A defensive core, that's pretty cool. Oh wow, that's really good. So I'm gonna gain, if I actually put this on, is this better than what I have? So this one allows me to exhaust and counter. It also gives me plus one to defense. This one gives me a plus one to defense, but a plus two to health. And the exhaust, instead of being for a counter, becomes a dodge. I like that really good. The only thing that's kind of weird is that I already have the occult shirt that is really good at dodging. I wonder if this would be a great one to eventually trade over to Rook, but we'll have to see and talk more about how that works later. But for now, this is going to go in the pack for Remy. All right, Rook, you are up next, and I need to get you up close to those cave sickles to try to take one down so they can't use their hive mind on me. So let's go ahead and use one stamina from Rook in order to get him moving. Now, remember, he's got a uh, maximum movement of five because of his crazy warhammers. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and I guess we could move five right beside right here. So it's going to be kind of hard to see because the wings here on this thing are insanely massive. Uh, maybe I'll turn her sideways so I can move past her later. But what I'm also going to do, I have three stamina left. I'm going to spend one more to gain two more movement uh, while I move, which will get me from here to here. And there was no hindering terrain or anything like that in between, so I was able to get right there in front of the green one. And lastly, I'll use two stamina to make an attack against the green cave sickle. So two white dice going into this one. I'm definitely going to go ahead and I'm going to um, exhaust my Warhammer as I have done in the past as well because, well, it just does great things when I do that, like giving me the ability to empower, which is going to give me a black die. So we're going to go ahead and roll these now and we're going to hope to take some serious damage against this green one. So here we go. Wish me luck. Looking for a big, big, big time hit here. Okay, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh my goodness, that was bad. So first off, I used in power and I rolled a skull. It makes the entire thing a wash. Regardless of whatever numerical value is there, if you empower something and you land that skull, it's just a wash. It's a complete miss. So that was a fail and I have absolutely no stamina left. 
Uh, can't do anything about that one, so that is what it is. And uh, so in this case now, the sickles are gonna be able to get their revenge on me. So we're gonna start it off here with number four. So again, if you wanna follow in terms of which ones activate correctly in a group, you can just use the top section of the card here. So four, five, and six might be hard to see with the glare there, but basically four is the light blue one in the back. So that's the one that's gonna activate first. Um, that one is going to attempt to see there's someone adjacent, there's not an opponent adjacent, so that's done. Also, I could always remove this totem here. It doesn't need to be here anymore that I've activated. I should have done that earlier. And uh, next up, it says, is there an opponent within range four? So it can do this. There is somebody within range four. It's actually two individuals within range four. So it can go one, two, or one, two, three. So there's two individuals that it could attack. So we know that there's two potential targets here because they're both within range four as we just discussed, but this particular uh, AI portion of the card doesn't specify anything else to differentiate between uh, targets if there's multiple targets in the area. So what happens is you go to the initiative track and whoever's uh, the closest to the beginning of the initiative track is the one who's targeted. So in this case, Remy's actually targeted even though um, Rook is closer. So Remy's gonna be the target of this attack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, oh, this is gonna be really interesting actually. Do I want to risk trying to counter an attack here from this? I could, well, actually, no, I can't because I wouldn't be able to actually counter it. I'm too far away from it. I, I don't have range anyway. So yeah, I'm just taking this attack with no, nothing else to help me. Of course, my occult shirt is exhausted at this point, so I can't use it. It didn't come back to life for me, so that's too bad. So yes, the Casicle is going to attack me from range. It's also going to give, uh, gain hive mind as it has before, so it'll be going in with an orange and a white die against my 10 defense, so I'm really hoping that this thing swings and misses. Here is hoping that happens. Oh, it got exactly 10. That's the worst. Well, it made a hit, but now it's going to gain one for the shield, and I don't believe the books will help it at all, so it's just one damage. So that's actually not too bad. So basically, Remy goes from two damage to three damage total on her now. The next thing that's going to happen is it says, then move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage within movement range. And that's definitely going to be Remy because Rook doesn't have any. And so it's this guy back here with a movement of six, so it's going to try to get to Remy going one, two, three and yes it will even put itself in harm's way to get there four and five so we get to roll once to see if it falls into the pit really hoping that happens it'd be hilarious if that works out for us so come on fall into the pit nope that's not going to happen today so it is there and now it's going to uh Oh, sorry, so it moved to be adjacent to me, and then it's going to make the attack. So now Remy is going to be hit again by this cave sickle. So this cave sickle will get its two white dice as normal, but again has SOI for hive mind. So there's the orange one coming back in, and we're going to roll. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope this doesn't hurt us too badly. So here we go. Oh, that's a pretty big hit. Oh, man, that's not good. So that is going to be a total of... 13 ouch now we have 10 so that's three damage to us right there and then an extra damage for each of the shields so that's going to be a total of five damage well that escalated pretty quickly so five damage is going to be placed on remy so now eight damage on remy now remember i have 12 health on remy but i also have 12 extra because of the linked adventure so i have 24 so we're still doing a-ok -okay. books aren't going to matter stars don't matter it don't do anything for the cave sickle, but thank goodness that is over, I think. Let me just double check. Oh yes, actually something else horrible happens. It's gonna move into the follow-up, which is gonna be inflict poison force nine. So because this attack landed and did damage, the follow-up's gonna happen. So poison and force nine are now gonna trigger. So you may be wondering how this Inflict Poison and Force 9 actually works. Well, essentially it's called a spell-like ability. So this is not like casting a spell. There's two different spell actions that can happen during the game, and it can be a spell that's cast from a hero or a spell that's even cast from a combatant. But this is called a spell-like ability, which basically triggers and forces our hero that's being targeted to roll their Conviction Dice. So this is something that we looked at earlier in the playthrough but never actually Actually explained fully so this is a great time to talk about it the conviction dice are specified right here so when you're casting I get one purple when I'm actually using conviction I use two purple now there's abilities that allow you to upgrade and switch out dice just like what would happen with the hive mind for instance and I have some on rook but this attack is actually hitting Remy so Remy has to roll 
two purple dice and the goal is is to get higher than the nine that's right here if i do not then i become poisoned i don't currently have anything on her that can boost or help me there so it's really just a roll and a fingers crossed that i don't get hit by this poison poison in this game is pretty nasty as you'll see if i happen to get poison so let's go ahead and see how it pans out Oh yeah, definitely getting poisoned. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a token for Remy and inflict poison on her. So Remy does become poison and we'll get a poison token. If you wanna know more about the poison token, you can flip it over. It even has a tag here, which will trigger in a particular phase, which happens to be the status phase. So remember when we were talking with the adventurer's turn, there was start of turn, then status phase, then refresh phase, action phase, and end of turn phase. So basically the second phase in, just before we're about to do our refresh um, at the beginning of a round essentially is gonna be when this particular poison triggers and it's going to hit the character that's poisoned and it says on it that you are dealt irreductible damage, basically meaning you can't block it, equal to half your remaining HP, which is ridiculously brutal, and it really whittles your character down round by round. So there are ways to get rid of this condition, and one of the major ways to get rid of it is to use something like Magic Bomb, which is something that actually Rook is carrying around on him, and it says remove an effect from an ally within SOI. So this is something on his turn. In the future, when it comes around to his turn again, he can use in order to to remove that poison from Remy, which I will likely do. Um, so other than that, uh, you're basically just kind of stuck with it. So poison can be pretty nasty that way and your conviction is your way of trying to uh, fight against it. So that's gonna actually complete the entire AI section for the Cavesicle from the fourth position or the fourth Cavesicle. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because it's technically the light blue one that's left. It's the only one left in the entire board. And we're gonna begin a brand new round. So when we start a brand new round, we put a timer token, which is going to actually be a one when we put it in because this is the end of our third round, but we're gonna go ahead and just flip it to make it a three and I'll remove the two ones that I have at the top of the scenario because we're three in now. So we've spent three full rounds of the game so far trying to get to the end. However, before we hit the refresh phase in order to get our stamina points back and also refresh our cards, we hit the status phase, which is gonna trigger the poison, which is on Remy. So half of our health that's remaining is gonna be dealt in damage, which is pretty nasty. So currently right now, we have 24 health minus the eight damage that I have on her. So 16 health. That means she's gonna currently take half that health right now in damage, which is gonna to translate to eight damage, which is absolutely brutal. So it definitely puts you in a harmed state for sure, taking that poison. So we really wanna get that off of her, and I'm probably gonna to wanna to use my health in order to help her, but she's got quite a bit of damage on her now. Remember, she's got a total damage allotment of 24 because 12 down here from her original health value, and then she's got 12 from the linked adventure here off on the side of the screen. So now that we've done this, we can now bring back her occult shirt from being exhausted. We can then fill up her stamina track with four gems. I'm gonna do the exact similar type of thing with Rook, although Rook is not poisoned, and then we're good to go for the upcoming round. So that was pretty nasty overall, and you can see how poison can be a fairly big problem for your heroes. So we now begin on the initiative track with Remy. I'm fairly certain I know exactly what I want to do with Remy, and that's going to be exhausting this war axe that she currently has in order to use books for physical damage, uh, which is just here. We've done this a couple times now. We're going to make an attack here, though, on the light blue one, which I'm really excited to do because we really need to take this thing out quickly. Uh, so it's going to give us two white dice going into this. Um, I have everything else is not going to help me out, so really I'm going into this with a spend of two stamina points to make this attack. Um, I could and probably will will go ahead and spend a stamina point to add in power to this to make sure that I actually do enough damage to kill it. That's going to be the hope. So that's one more stamina point removed. We also have to remember the fact that if I happen to roll any stars in this dice, now that um, Rook is nearby, I'll end up being able to give Rook a stamina point based on my linked character. So we can remember that now that we're kind of getting jammed up together, if I happen to see stars. We'll see if that happens though. So here we go, here's the roll, hoping for good things. We need an eight in order to get past the defense. 
Okay, we got a 10, that's a fantastic. Actually, you know what, this will do it for sure. We got a 10, so 10 minus the eight is two damage. And then we're gonna get a damage for every shield. We didn't even need the book. This is beyond. So we got six, seven, eight. We got the star, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna give Rook another stamina. So he'll start his turn with five. And uh, we didn't need the book at all. So we got way more than the, the damage needed in order to take this case out. So just so you guys are aware, 10 minus eight, two damage, and then four here is six, seven, eight, eight damage, way more than enough. So very, very successful attack there. That capsicle is gone. I have one more point of stamina to use with Remy. So the question becomes, do I burn over here to grab the loot? Probably. If I can book it over here and get the loot, then I can leave um, Rook here to take out this last capsicle and then go one, two, three, four, five, and maybe use an extra stamina to get to the exit and we're done this turn if things go well. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a uh, one stamina burn here. So this one right here, in order to move uh, Remy across the dangerous terrain. Again, she's got natural flight. Ooh, actually, now that I think about this, this is gonna cost me two stamina to do natural flight. So I could, hmm, that's an interesting one. So I only have one stamina right now. I'd have to spend two stamina to make a move and, ha and give Remy uh, the flight ability for the duration of the movement, or I risk it and try to jump across. All right, so let's spend that last stamina point on Remy in order to move, and we're gonna jump while we do it, and I'll talk to you about how we can do that. Now, normally I would love to use flight, as I mentioned earlier, but I don't have the stamina to do it currently. So what we're gonna do is we have seven movement with her. I'm gonna move her one, two, and then we're gonna go three right here across the only one point of, this is basically the only way that I could move across this pit without taking the uh, the most likelihood of something you know, bad happening. So three, four, five, six, and I might as well, well, I'll think about this for a second as to whether I wanna sit beside the loot or maybe just go up like this because I believe I can still interact with it adjacently this way too. So I bet either way, as long as one of my adventures hit that exit, I'm fine. So I could probably be happy leaving her right there. Uh, but essentially I have to still check to see whether I was successful doing the actual jump itself. So what you end up doing is you end up doing an agility check or but it's an agility 10 check. So my agility currently is a six. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make an agility 10 check. Now, just so you guys understand a little bit more about the jumping, and basically it's an agility 10 check for the first space that you jump over. Any additional spaces that you jump over after that are gonna add two to the difficulty. And there's a bunch of rules in terms of how you can jump within the rule book that I won't really go into detail here because we're not doing that just yet. But one thing that's really interesting to note is that if you're next to an ally when you make the jump, you can actually add to your roll and have a better chance of making it. Uh, it ends up using um, strength, I believe, from your other player in order to try to help you across. And then of course, if you still fail, they can potentially help you by allowing you, or basically saving you from falling into the pit. So there's some kind of cool mechanics there, but we're not gonna do that here because we're separated at this point. And I didn't actually move towards him, I moved away from him. So we're gonna roll two purple dice to do this skill check. My agility, as I mentioned already, is six. So this is gonna help us out. We just need a little bit more of a boost to get there. Oh yeah, we got it. Without even needing my base uh, agility, we got it. So that was a perfectly successful jump. We're all the way over here to the blue loot token. So with the description and understanding of how jump works, the interesting thing is we have no more stamina left on Remy, so I can't do an encounter action which costs one stamina to actually interact with this blue loot token right now, which means I'd have to essentially delay the game another round in order to do this, um, which is kind of sad, but I still wanted to show you guys the jumping and how that works. Uh, we're gonna have to make a decision as to whether or not we wanna burn another round. I think we probably will because we're doing quite well, and I wanna find out what that blue uh, loot token is all about. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now and say Remy's turn is done. Now again, if I want to encounter that particular blue loot token on Remy's turn next round, I just use an encounter action that basically costs uh, one stamina point, which is actually right here as part of the standard actions and says that you can actually interact with loot tokens but I just don't have that stamina right now so she's gonna have to put up with the fact that she can't do it sadly so that's gonna end her turn we're gonna now move over to uh, Rook here Rook has five stamina so yeah that's gonna be kind of sad because otherwise he could have just booked it straight out of here but I really want to see 
what that token is. I'm gonna go ahead and use two stamina right now in order to attack this particular uh, cave sickle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're definitely gonna exhaust the Warhammer as well so that we can get um, uh, the empower ability for free. So we're gonna exhaust this card there. So it's gonna give us two white dice and a black die against him. And again, there's no damage on this one at all yet. So I'm really hoping for a good roll. Need an eight or higher. Okay, so we didn't exactly get what we needed there at all. So that didn't really work out too well. Um, so we didn't make the defensive value that we needed. Now, do we have anything we can reroll with this? I don't believe so. The other thing I will do in order to keep Remy from taking any more damage is I might as well go ahead. I probably should have done this before I rolled and just use my magic bomb here. I'm going to discard this. That will get rid of the... Um, or actually, I have to make sure I'm within four range first. One, two, three, yes. So I can discard Magic Bomb, which I'm gonna do in order to turf uh, Remy's poison. So I'm doing this kind of out of turn because I'm doing this, well, I'm doing it within turn, but uh, inside the attack action for some strange reason, just because I remembered. But the sad thing is this attack didn't land. So Remy has to try to make this attack again. So we're gonna go ahead and see whether or not we can uh, you know, land this attack a second time. So we're gonna have to burn another two stamina in order to make this attack again. And I'll exhaust my other Warhammer to get in power again to reroll these dice. And I'm not really rerolling, I'm actually just rolling again and it's another attack. So give me something better this time. There we go, we got a nine. This should definitely do it. So. If we take a look at the Warhammer card here, so nine for value minus eight is one damage. Uh, we got two shields there, so that'll add another damage, so that's two damage. We have no stars, and we have books, but the books don't help us. Ooh, that's actually not that good of an attack. Okay, well, I think that's not as great as I was hoping for. Yeah, it appears so. It looks like it's just going to be two damage going on to this one. So really not the kind of hits that I was expecting there. And that's kind of surprising. I still have one stamina left on Rook, but uh, there's nothing else I can really do with it. I can't make another attack. So I'm kind of stuck exactly where I sit currently. So what I'm going to do is probably just call her quits right there, knowing I'm going to have to go into a second round. Now, the downside is the Cave Sickle is going to go ahead and attack. It is beside me, so it's going to go ahead and attack me using its AI at the very beginning here. So with the most, of course, is going to be me. So it's going to be two yellow dice, or sorry, two white dice with no bump up for hive mind because nobody else is around. Um, for rook, though, I could potentially, actually, I do have one stamina, so I could potentially try to dodge this. But uh, you know what? I might not. I might not. I might just see if it can land as is. So I'm going to, I'm just going to take the attack as is. I'm going to choose not to. We'll see how it pans out. Oh man, that definitely wasn't a good idea. So 11 there on that one. So 11 and my base uh, defense for myself is 10. So that means one damage is gonna get through. And then the cave sickle gets an extra damage for every shield. So that's gonna bump up to four damage total. Now it does say here on my armor that I actually have one plus armor. So one of the damages is removed, so I only am taking three damage now. And then below it says exhaust when you are dealt damage, reduce physical damage dealt to you by two. So I'll exhaust this, and at the end of the day, I only take one damage on Rook. So Rook is really good that way for being a tank. Doesn't take as much from that hit as a, a normal hero would. That is going to end that, and it was successful. So it does say here that uh, there's a follow-up. So make an attack against the same target. Uh, this follow-up attack has um, to, oh my goodness, so there's just follow-up attacks all over the place here. So it's going to be another attack coming at me again following the AI track, so it's not over yet. Now it was quite silly of me there not to use the dodge because I was thinking that it was just the one attack. I forgot this one has multiple follow-ups. The bonus with using a dodge in the first attack when there's multiple follow-ups is if the enemy doesn't land a hit at all, which it did, it hit me for just barely one. But if I had have actually used the dodge, it would have increased my defense and it would have stopped the follow-up attacks which are happening right now. So I can, because this will literally go through three different attacks, a regular attack, a follow-up to that, and then a follow-up to that as long as they're successful, I can at least stop one follow-up attack coming down the road if I spend this last stamina here to add a black die to the roll, which I probably should have done on the first attack. That was just kind of a silly mistake on my part. So we're gonna go ahead and roll this. We're gonna hope for good things. I should have done this from the get-go would have stopped things early um oh wow books well that's certainly not that's probably the worst roll i could have gotten and it actually landed a very good roll 
Wow, so it got 13. So that's gonna be three damage through to start with. Um, and then you're gonna add in four more shield worth of damage. So you're talking seven damage now to me. Um, I can block one with my armor and I take six. That is a huge hit. So these things might look small, but they can start racking up some serious pain on you. And you know what's even brutal about this? I burned that stamina trying to stop another follow-up attack and it gets another one because it landed this one. But now I have no ability to dodge it. So I'm gonna be taking another attack. This is pretty vicious. So here comes another one at me. All right, this one's a nine, so this one will not land. Of course, the one at the very end doesn't land. Um, so thank goodness for that. It had to get a 10, it did not. So it is over with now, finally. Oh, that was painful. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put another time token on uh, up here to track things because we finished the end of a round. So we're up to four rounds total finished. We don't have poison on Remy anymore because I used the bomb in order to get rid of it. So that's good. So we don't have to worry about any statuses. We can unexhaust all the cards we, we exhausted during the last turn. So Rook basically exhausted his armor, his war hammers, all that stuff, and the war axe over there on Remy's back. So everything's good there. We, we get all of our stamina replenished, and we started off with Remy hoping to end it in this round. So this is pretty awesome. So Remy's gonna start it off and use one stamina in order to do an encounter action to check out the blue loot token. Let's go to the scenario book and see what it says. And the blue loot token says that we find a pile of treasure, gain two random consumables. In addition, finding this box will look good when getting graded. Gain two bonus points. Ah, so that was worth it. So Remy is going to gain two random mundane consumables right now. So that's good. So we're going to shuffle this deck up here real good. I'll split it halfway. And we got ourselves... Ooh, a smoke bomb. That looks pretty cool. Discard. You do not provoke break attacks until the end of turn. So that'll come in really handy when we want to move away from a character we're adjacent to. So that's really good. And the next one on top is throwing knives. So we actually get some throwing knives back, which is fantastic. One of the ones we actually used from the very beginning, and I really like those. So those are two really good consumables. So we're going to place them in here. Now, I'm going to have to double check really quick to make sure we're not over our limit of three consumables, but I believe three is the max. So that blue loot token, it can be removed from the game board. I'm gonna spend one stamina with Remy to move her to about here. Might seem like a really weird movement. Of course, I could just go right to the exit and end it right now, but I really wanna to try to get rid of this cave sickle to get some extra points on the, win, on the win condition at the end. We'll see how Rook holds out in this, but at least what my plan is here with Remy with all the damage I have on her, I wanna stay within one, two, three, four spaces, which is within SOI range because Rook has, when he activates right now, because I'm going to end Remy's turn. He has Mend as a discipline that says gain two heal tokens per encounter. I have not used those two heal tokens yet. If I have them, I can spend them on an ally as long as I'm within SOI. And for every one I spend on an ally, not only do they heal six for each one, I also gain a stamina point for each one, meaning Rook can push himself up to the maximum of five stamina where he's currently at four. Now normally it would be one extra stamina per pack, but you could never go over the five limit and I had four stamina to start this turn with Rook. So we're gonna go ahead and remove 12 health from Remy, which is a fantastic heal, bringing her down to a total damage of six. So that's, that's a huge drop from where she was. And now Rook is gonna go ahead and activate, and we know what Rook's doing. He's gonna go after this cave sickle big time. All right, Rook, it's all up to you now. Let's get rid of this thing and end it. So we're gonna spend two stamina tokens in order to make an attack. We're gonna grab two white dice. We're gonna exhaust one of the hammers in order to give it in power, which is gonna give us a black die. So we're gonna be rolling these three dice right here. We're really hoping not to see that skull symbol because that would be bad. So here we go. Oh, that's a pretty solid hit right there. That's actually really, really good. Let's see how this works out. So we got a seven and a two. So take that away. So the nine from eight is one damage already. Um, and then for every two shields, we're gonna get an extra damage. So three damage, or sorry, one damage already, two damage, three damage. Does the star do anything? Yes, that's four damage. And I think that's where it stops because I don't have anything I can use for books. So four damage is almost enough to kill it, but just not enough, almost, very close. So we only need, oh no, sorry, that is enough because it already has two damage on it. Ha, that I did earlier, forgot about that. It is dead, that is enough to do it. So we have killed it off. I forgot about the two damage. I was sitting right on top of the green uh, portion for uh, for that cave skull already. So 
that is enough that is enough so there you go caves and cold destroyed another one down awesome so now we can actually go ahead with rook and we can just book it straight for the exit now before we do that we're going to draw a combatant loot card because we took out another category worth of cave sickles so i pulled another card and we got a six gold that's fantastic so that'll go on top of the five that i already have so in the end we got a five gold a six gold a nine gold and an item loot for the four different sets of cave sickles and we'll go ahead and spend one stamina right now in order to move one two three four five which gets us almost to the exit and then we'll spend the other stamina to get a little bit extra movement up to two movement that will get us to the exit and we have completed the first scenario all right and it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't check what kind of reward we got after winning the scenario so let's go ahead and use the decoder to reveal that we got a reward to restore adventurers. Awesome. So that's going to actually help out quite a bit because Remy would have been in serious trouble. Rook's got some damage. So basically, I'm assuming that means wipe all conditions and, and damage away from our characters. So that's a good thing. Uh, the good news, too, is when I used Mend, which is a discipline on Rook, in order to use two health packs, those health packs rejuvenate themselves and come back every other scenario. So I used them to remove some healing, but I guess I didn't need to. But I guarantee you, some of these win conditions will not always be be like that where you just restore your characters magically like this so that's really cool to see though because it's nice to get everybody back to square one again um, i don't know and i'm not going to look to see what happens next just yet we're going to end the video right here thank you guys so much for watching we'll see what happens in terms of the in-between game between this scenario and the next one if we need to do some kind of upkeep we will do that in terms of our adventures and we'll also talk about the two-player variants handling of gold because we compiled a, a quite a bit of gold in this scenario and it's handled differently using the two-player variant than normal so we'll discuss all of that at the beginning of the next video and also hopefully dive right into the second scenario unless there's some upkeep we need to handle thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments below if you saw anything i missed and as always keep on rolling solo